Hi everyone, welcome to the first module of Verilog HDL Crash Course. In this module, we are going to cover basic introduction of Verilog HDL and then we will see different level of abstraction in Verilog HDL. So Verilog HDL is one of the two most common hardware description language used by integrated circuit designers. The other language is VHDL. And the design which is described using the HDL are technology independent. That means whether your device is going to be built on 180 nanometer technology or 90 nanometer technology or 40 nanometer technology, the design with respect to Verilog SDL or commonly used SDL is not going to be changed. Only the technology node is going to be changed. And the SDLs are easy to design and debug and are usually more readable than schematic. So, definitely. A design written in HDL is going to be more readable for the user compared to its schematic version. And Verilog is used as an input for synthesis program which will generate a gate level description. So when we write the HDL and when we synthesize it using synthesis tool, we are going to get a gate level netlist. That means our Verilog HDL is basically going to convert into a netlist. The way the code is written will greatly affect the size and speed of the synthesized circuit. So to write an efficient Verilog HDL, we have to make sure that we take care of size, the design size and speed. So writing Verilog HDL is not an easy task. We have to take care performance, its size, the design size, design performance and power. Many factors basically we need to Keep in mind, some very low constructs are not synthesizable like delay and the non-synthesizable constraints in very low are basically used in very low based test benches. Guys, always remember very low is not a programming language. It is a hardware description language. Let me try to explain in other words. When suppose when we write a program in C or C++, basically what we are doing is we are telling to some hardware that this is the piece of code and we want to execute it. For example, we want to find out find out a greatest number in a given 10 number. So we are telling the hardware, a particular hardware that please do some processing and let us know the maximum or the greatest number in these 10 numbers. So that is what called a programming language concept. But the design of that hardware to which our C program is telling to do some processing. The design of that hardware is built using HDL. What is programming language? Let the hardware perform a particular function. This is nothing but a programming language concept. And HDL is nothing but design of that hardware. So I hope this point is clear. Now let's see some more important points. There are two types of code in most SDLs. The first one is structural code. So basically the structural code in HDLs are used to model the combinational circuit. So in a designs, we, 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 we are going to have some combinational logic and some sequential logic. So to code the combinational logic actually in our design, we mostly use the structural code. And to model the sequential portion of our design like flip-flops or any storage element in our designs, we go for the procedural kind of code. And in structural code, we most we use the assign statement while in procedural code, we use always very low keyword. So we will be covering these in more details in the next uh, modules. But here, just a heads up that there are two types of code in Verilog HDL or in commonly used SDLs, the structural code and procedural codes. The structural code is used to model the combinational circuits and the procedural is used for circuits which have storage elements or it is a convenient way to write the conditional logic. That means whatever conditional statements we have in HDL like if statement, case statements, etc., our procedural code is going to be more convenient. In other words, our procedural code or our procedural block of the statements 
can model both sequential elements and combinational elements. Okay, it's very important point here. The structural type of code is always used to write the combinational circuit. But the procedural code can write both sequential and combinational code. And the style of procedural block in which we are writing the HDL will determine whether the circuit which is going to be realized out of that very log HDL code is sequential or combinational. And the other important point is all the conditional statements like if else statement, case statements can only be used inside procedural blocks. So I hope this point is also very much clear. Now there are four levels of abstraction which can be used to describe a particular design. So at a switch level if our design we have uh, if our given design we have to model at a switch level or transistor level the Verilog modeling is called switch level modeling. If we have to model the design at a gate level we will call it as a gate level and if we have to model the design in a form of boolean equations. We are given a design with some boolean expression. That is called data flow and it is also called register transfer level. The fourth type of abstraction is behavioral level. So when we are not given a design in a switch level or gate level or in any form of boolean equations but the design which we are given is in behavioral form that means we are just given a description of the design for example suppose we are given that there are three bluffs and one control signal and based on the value on control signal one of the bluff is going to be on or off basically some behavior of a design. So using that behavior, we have to write the very low HDL code. So these are the four levels of abstractions. We will see each and every level in more details in next slides. So first let's understand the switch level modeling. So in switch level modelings, we are always given a design in form of some switch. So here PMOS and NMOS which are acting as a switch. So to model this, so, so if you see this is an inverter circuit. So how we can write the very low HDL code for this circuit. So let's assume that this is an inverter circuit. So we, are, we have to instance it. So basically we have to declare a module called an called a inverter. And this inverter has one input, one output and there are also supply to this inverter. So the supply to the, this inverters we have to declare as a supply data types and here is the PMOS and NMOS switch statement. So this is how we model a design at switch level. Now let's see at gate level. So suppose we are given a design. This suppose this is a top level designs. I will call it as a my design. And if you see this my design contains three logic gates, one AND gate, one an AND gate and one OR gate. So the inputs are A and B to, both, uh, to all of the three gates and the output is Y. So now how we will write the video log HDL code for this design. So suppose the design name is my HDL, we have inputs and then we have to write the code for these three gates. So here basically we are directly instantiating these gates in our design. So this is nothing but called gate level modeling. So if you saw here in our switch level modeling, what we are instantiating is we are instantiating the switch logic directly, PMOS or NMOS or whatever switch is given in the circuit. Here in gate level modeling, we are given the gates and we have to instantiate the gates in our very log HDL. Now let's see the third. Third is nothing but register transfer level or data flow level. So, so what we are given here is we are given some boolean equation and that boolean equation is nothing but the equation for the output of this circuit. So here max the equation for the max out. So we know the equation of the max out is going to be select bar A plus select B. So to model any boolean expressions we have to use the assign statement. So in data flow level modeling or in 
register transfer level modeling we have to use the assign statements and here we have to write the expression for the boolean expression for the given circuit so this kind of modeling is nothing but data flow level modeling the fourth level is algorithmic level or behavioral level abstraction of very log stl so here here we are only given some behavioral explanation of the circuit for example we are given that we have a select signal and when the select signal is zero our input a will be going to the output when the select signal is high our input b will be going to the output so this kind of expression is given to us now to model this kind of expression in very log hdl we are not given a circuit here as well just i have just put the circuit here to to explain uh, in more details so we are only given the behavioral explanation of a circuit so to model that in very log hdl what we can do is we can use the procedural statements because the all the conditional statements are allowed in procedural block only in very log hdl so here if you see based on the select the max out will be either b or a so i hope the brief introduction of verilog and what are all the level of abstraction in verilog hdl are clear to you if you like this video please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as i upload a new video thank you very much